Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is Monday, May 31st. It is Memorial Day. I hope that you guys are all having a great holiday weekend, celebrating with your loved ones, remembering those who serve for us, and otherwise just getting ready for summer. The markets are closed today, so I wanted to make a short video at the request of a couple of subscribers regarding the trade journal. I'm going to walk you through how I log my trades and um, show you what you can do to create your own trade journal of a similar type. And of course, you are not obligated to use this. You can modify, you can add, you can delete. You can use something totally different. But I think that logging your trades is pretty important. I track my trading on a credit collected basis. I pay pretty much zero attention to profit and loss statements. I don't really care about PNL. It doesn't serve me because all I care about is the amount of credit I collect per trade and how much credit I have to give back per trade, which is why my trade journal is pretty straightforward. It's not doesn't require a lot of crazy formulas or various charts and graphs. Um, but there are people out there who trade, who log their trades totally different. So this is just one way that you can log your trades if you are a option seller and you like to focus on the amount of credit that you collect and how much credit you have to give back. This is this is the preferred method for me. So just before I get into that though, I wanted to give you a couple of quick account updates. This is where the Tiffany Trades Options account is right now in terms of total number of positions on. The total cash balance right now is $6,127. I have a short put on in Snap at the 62 strike. It's expiring on June 25th. I originally started this out as a put credit spread right before Snap's last earnings. That didn't go so great. Uh, Snap actually sunk well below both of those strikes. And what I ended up doing, and I'm going to demonstrate this in the future when I do it again, is I ended up selling back the long side of the put credit spread for a considerable profit. And so the total cost basis right now for the Snap put credit spread that I turned into a short put is $717.78. I could close this position now and still be profitable. Um, I'm going to see how the market acts tomorrow and, and maybe the rest of this week and, and make some decisions from there. It is not my plan to hold Snap through expiration. I do not hold options of any kind, and especially short options through expiration, and I always close early. Generally, 50% or more. I'm clearly in the 50% plus target right now, but given that um, the market has experienced a lot of recent volatility and seems to be on an uptrend, I want to see how far that will go before I decide to close Snap. Worst case scenario, if I have to, I'm going to roll Snap out in time as is and collect more credit. The second position I have on is a square put credit spread. This originally started off as a $5 wide spread a couple of months ago, and I made a somewhat recent video about how to roll in the money put credit spreads, and I made the demonstration of how I typically manage in the money put credit spreads, especially square in that video. I have since rolled it again, and it is now a $1,500 wide put credit spread, but I am still bullish on Square. I still have the same outlook on Square and I have no problem holding this put credit spread this wide, but I am not going to be opening any more trades in this account until one or both of these is closed. So that's where I am for these two trades right now. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. You can see all of this trade activity in the Tiffany Trades Options Trade Journal. It is linked in all of the descriptions of all of my videos, a little bit below the actual video description. And I keep a sort of a daily log here, which I'll go over in just a minute, and then a per position log over here. And for Square, since I opened it, I have collected $711.40. It is not quite less than $711.40 at this rate, but I still have 32 days in the trade to see what happens. Square seems to be on the up move. I hope that it continues in that direction. If you want to see the more nitty gritty details of each of my trades, I keep a separate tab over here in the trade journal and transaction history. After each trade is executed, I will just download it directly from Tasty Trade and just copy and paste the cells over so that this is here for you. Um, it isn't, I mean, there's nothing really to it, just has the date right here, the type of trade. This is a deposit that I put in recently. I haven't been depositing any more money into this account in 2021, and I just decided to add an extra 
it tells you the ticker, buy to open, sell to close, etc. And then if you want to figure out how much credit I collected without having to look at this particular journal, you'd simply come over here and look at the amount and then you would subtract any fees. And so typically what I do when I log my trades is I make sure to include the fees in each of the transactions so that I have a better and more accurate picture of how much money I'm keeping and giving up. Okay, so this is the trade journal template. This is a blank version of this trade journal that I also keep in all of the descriptions of my videos. And it is a viewable only template for you as a subscriber because I don't want anyone to have access to make any edits to it and therefore turn it into a customized template for somebody else specifically. So if you want to create your own version of this template, you simply click the link in the description below the video. You come over to file, you select make a copy, it'll save it to your Google Drive. And if you are not a Google user, I I don't have any other alternatives at this point. I can send you a blank one via email if you refuse to use Google for any reason. But um, generally, this will be available to anybody with a gmail.com account. You can just save it to your drive. And this will give you a template that is saved to your own drive. You can change the name up here. And this is something that you have access to and you can edit on your own. You can change the colors if you don't like yellow and change it to red. If you don't like blue, change it to green. Whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter. But this is a template that you get to um, manipulate and decide how you want to use it on your side. Because this is a blank template, I've kept the dates. Um, every single day in the year is listed here. And what I prefer to do is I will delete the days that I have no trading activity. So now we're in May. So typically what I would recommend doing if you're going to get in here and start this for the first time, you just come in and just delete all the active, all the prior days that you are not trading or haven't traded. So we're just going to go ahead and delete that shift up. So here we are at May 31st and it's, this is a fake market day. I'm going to do a model trade on thinkorswim using their virtual on demand and you know that this is a virtual account every time you see a gold bar around it there also says virtual account here in the corner it gives you a default amount of one hundred thousand dollars in buying power um, you can change this i think i've never tried to figure out how to do that but this is just for purposes of simulating trades you can do some back testing you can figure out some strategies and see if it works for you so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into a random day and this has defaulted me to February 23rd, which is, oh gosh, must have been like right before we had some of that um, end of February, early March volatility and down move activity. So I'm just going to mo model a single short put in this account. So we're going to model a single short put in SPY uh, expiring March 19th, 2021. The simulated day in trading is February 23rd. So there's not many days to expiration. This is relatively close to the money. I wouldn't normally be doing this setup in my everyday trading, but just for purposes of this video and how to log the trade, I'm just going to go ahead and um, confirm and send. And so typically in my experience when I use these um, virtual accounts is they fill pretty quickly. Uh, I, don't, I don't tend to have a lot of wait time for filling so it's a good um, model to run through. You can see that the fake SPY position is here. I've collected $737 and it'll you know, run through the profit and loss um, as time goes on, the virtual time goes on. Typically when you're operating on Thinkorswim, you're gonna come over here to this account statement area. You can go back 30 days from the date that you're trading in. You can select custom trade ranges. I'm going to just assume that it didn't include any fees for this trade. Typically, if you're trading in Thinkorswim, Tastyworks, or E-Trade, you're going to see fees applied to your trade transaction. But for now, we're just going to assume that I collected $737 in credit. I know I just deleted all the prior days to include February 23rd, but for purposes of this video, I'm just going to act like I did it right now. So what I do when I log my trades is I will enter the amount of credit that I've collected in the day that I actually open the trade. So in this case, I collected $737 for my fake spy short put and I add it here. And this is the daily 
the daily activity. So if I have multiple trades on, I'm going to have multiple transactions here for that particular day. Sometimes I trade once a day. Sometimes I trade up to five times a day in a single account. Sometimes I don't trade at all. So it really, it'll, it'll vary. And you can see that is the case here on the actual trade journal for the TTO account. Most of the days I'm only doing one transaction in this account. A couple of days I'm doing a few more. Uh, it looks like the most I've done in any given day for 2021 is three. And the same thing to be said for 2020. So I've collected $737 in fake money here on uh, May 31st. And then I also enter it on a per position basis over here so that um, when I have multiple trades on, I can refer back to this positions cost basis section and I can know exactly how much credit I collected for SPY, how much credit I collected for SNAP, Square, etc. And you can see that played out right here as well. So I've collected um, $711 for Square. I've had, what is this? Six transactions for Square since I first opened the position. Same thing for Snap. I've had four transactions since I opened the position. So this allows me to easily track the amount of credit collected on a per position basis, whereas I can use this to sort of track the aggregate amount of credit collected on a per year basis. So going back to the virtual trade simulation, I'm going to go forward a day, or let's go forward a couple weeks. Okay, so the f simulated day in the future to close this position is March 12th. We can see that as of March 12th, 2021, SPY did not f fall below th the 380 strike, which is where I had sold my fake put at. So I'm going to come and close this position. It shows me that I have a profit and loss of 600 bucks. I'm going to create a closing order. I'm going to review. I'm going to close it for 137 debit. It's going to run through the confirmation screen for me. And my fake spy position has closed for $1.38 debit. So now my total cash balance in this simulated account is um, 100599 And as we know previously, I collected $737 minus $599 is $138 difference. So I gave up $138 in credit to close the position. So I'm gonna assume that I did this on June 1st. And typically what I do is I'll come in here and I'll enter the debit as a negative number here. You can change the color if you want. You don't have to. It might be easier to see if you want. It's up to you. And then I'll enter it in here as well. So I know based on how I log my trades that I have collected and kept $599 in credit for selling a single short put on SPY at the 380 strike. I do this over and over again for all of my positions, but typically in my larger trade journals that are not part of this uh, Google Drive, I will, after a period of time, I will start to delete positions just because I don't need to keep track of anything that I've done previously because I'm keeping a aggregate amount of credit collected here on this side. So I know how much credit I've collected for the year. If I've closed Microsoft, I don't need to see it anymore. I can clear the content um, so that I can make room for other trades as well. Okay, so that is it for the video. That is how I log my trades on a daily basis as well as on a per position basis. As I said, I'll do this over and over again. So if I, for example, decided to go and open up another put credit spread in the queues, I'll enter the amount of credit that I've collected, hypothetically speaking, 450 here. I'll add the queues here, 450. And if I closed it, you know, the next day or even two weeks later for 275, add it right here. And this is just my method for logging my trades. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is not the only method that you can use to log your trades. I have seen some trade journals and some spreadsheets that are a lot more detailed. Obviously, and this has always been my mantra, is to find the method that works best for you. This is something that is available to you as a, as a very basic template on all of the videos. Um, but definitely, definitely think about it. Definitely figure out if you want more information, if you want less information, if you like profit and loss information, if you like uh, the return on capital information, you can modify and adapt and delete and add as you see fit. There's no one size fits all for locking your trades. I just think it's extremely helpful for me 
in my trading journey because I am a, a credit seller or a, a credit collector more specifically. And this is this is the method that I have sort of hung on to for the last five years. And um, I, I might be convinced to change my mind, but I'm not certain that that's going to happen anytime soon. But if you are a trader and you have other um, resources that you want to share with the community, of course, please do add those in the comments below. I always love to see it. I love to hear what other people are doing, what's working for them. Uh, maybe others who are also watching the video will see something and, and learn from you as a subscriber or a commenter. And you can just share the knowledge and share the wealth. That's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad that you're here. If you found any value in this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. If you want to leave a comment for the algorithm, that would be much appreciated. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.